Hey guys, Boris Hosmer, BK Force. Welcome to our Force Day Tech for 12 6 uh, 13. As always, training point to change your margin carries a high level of risk for foreign investors. I ask you to raise this disclaimer very carefully to understand all the research you're doing on margin. I to seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. Uh, well, pre NFP night, it's going to be probably very exciting. Euro definitely had a very big move today. Um, post ECB, took out that 3625 area, which we've been talking about all week long, and now targeting 37. It'll be interesting to see if they can. There's probably going to be a temptation, of course, to run the 37s ahead of the NFPs in, in Europe. We'll see if there's enough umph there to uh, to try to gun it to that level, um, given the uh, the very powerful move that we had today. But aside from that, um, you know, the really big levels here are going to be, of course, 35 on the support side. Uh, there is very good possibility that the NFPs could be very good if they if they do turn out to be strong. Uh, we could have a big reversal candle today because a lot of this move today was basically up off of the Less a fair attitude of ECB and um, some fear that perhaps uh, the U.S. data is not as good as it seems, so therefore the taper is going to be delayed. If that sentiment changes, we could have a big reversal. If that sentiment continues, certainly negative um, NFPs now make 37 almost a, a given fall. Uh, the more interesting question then is, once we move past the 37s, we're going to have enough. Are we going to have enough fuel here to really challenge the 38 highs, which is going to be, I think, incredibly surprising. And take a tremendous amount of bulls, uh, to take a tremendous amount of euro shorts by surprise because the whole idea here was that you'd assume that with European economy so sclerotic, with US moving towards a taper, the move should be the other way. But the move has, I think, surprised a lot of people. And the fact that we have a technical breakout here uh, really suggests a much stronger move to the upside rather than to the downside. So we'll see how the uh, trade goes tomorrow. But for now, the bias is to the upside in the euro dollar. Uh, in the yen, the reverse kind of a situation happening here. We sort of a sell off into the 101.50s. Again, yen very sensitive also to the NFPs, of course. And if that number comes in poor and we have a taper delay idea, then we unwind all the way out to 101. I think that's the near term support. And I don't think we're going to hit more than 101 off of the uh, uh, bad NFP number simply because the story in the U.S. is the taper denied, taper delayed but not denied. In other words, it will be coming. And um, the dollar yen move um, definitely looks like I think it's going to consolidate. I will say this though: what's interesting about dollar yen, if you are a bear, is that if we do move to the 101s and then we sort of churn and can't really come back up above the 102s, you will have set up a classic double top formation, lower double top formation, and then you really could have a stronger unwind all the way, all the way back up to 99s. All of this, actually, from a technical point of view, is fascinating because it is completely contrary to the common sense normal fundamental view that I think a lot of consensus um, economists have and that may be one of the strongest reasons for why it could happen. So we could potentially be in the middle of actually a steeper correction in dollar yen and a stronger move in euro dollar to completely unexpected moves I think as we um, approach the end of the year in the currency market. Cable holding out uh, 63 held today. Uh, cable was a relative week today against the euro, tremendous amount of euro pound selling. Euro pound is an interesting cross to look at because we had a big bounce today. This 82.50 after you know big brouhaha of breaking the 82.50, we actually had a very very strong spike bounce. But as you can see, euro pound tends to do this. It will do a spike bounce and it comes back down against it. So for now, this 84 is a pretty serious constraint. It's actually um, I think going to be an interesting trade. There may be a side trade in um, in the NFPs to watching the um, uh, the 84s on the euro pound. If that kind of fails. That may be an interesting trade to the downside, uh, selling the euro against the pound post NFP moves. But in the meantime, the pound itself, uh, finding support around 63, looks like it kind of wants to uh, uh, come back up and test. But this, this is really now consolidation 63, 64, 63, 64. We'll see how trade goes tomorrow post NFPs, if it can really bust out. If we have a negative NFP number and, and cable starts to busting out, if it can clear the 64, 50 level, that would be a, a pretty powerful move towards a squeeze or 65. So I'll be watching that very carefully. And last, there's my Aussie. Last but not least, Aussie held 90 for two days in a row. That's relatively bullish. Um, again, a lot of it is contingent, of course, on tomorrow's data. But the fact that we held 90 for two days in a row puts 91 back in, in, in play. 91 is definitely um, a key level uh, for a lot of shorts to jump right back in because, uh, you know, you still have an incredibly negative uh, – Construct in, in the Aussie. Um, basically, every rally has been a sell ever since the end of October. So, um, given that given that past price performance, you're going to have tremendous amount of shorts that are going to want to start to sell against 91s. So, this will be interesting because if 91s do get 
bowled over and we push all the way out to 9150s, that would be a much more powerful and more a sustained bottom, which would be a higher bottom in the Aussie dollar and could be a potential for a fresh leg back up, a corrected leg back up to towards 93. So that's how the, the uh, night shapes up. I get ahead of the NFPs. Wish you guys the best of luck, and we'll see how it turns out tomorrow.